Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Zane. Today we'll be having a look at Polestar. I've got some brilliant news. So the Gauss Guggenheim shares jumped 13%. And this was after the crash. This is after the crash. And if we look at the chart, we'll notice that just around the 15th, going towards the 16th, just a crossover, I'd say the 16th, the market just crashed for Gauss Guggenheim instantly. It's like people just started panicking and we don't really know what triggered it. I mean, you can look at some of the biggest companies in the world, look at Apple, Amazon, they've all got the same pattern. The 15th and 16th, Apple crashed as well, from $135 to about $129, a big hit for Apple. If we look at Amazon, even after Amazon stock splits, it's the same thing. It's the same pattern, granted, it's different volumes, for each company, but it's the same pattern. Look at Tesla, it was $699 and it fell to a lowest $629. That's a big hit for Tesla. Netflix is another victim, 182 to as low as 171. And of course, if you look at Google, Alphabet from $2,224 to as low as $2,118. Once again, a big hit. What am I trying to say? Well. It's not just Goose Guggenheim, it's not just Polestar. So I've seen a lot of people panicking, panicking and panicking. And I just wanna say, just relax. It wasn't just Polestar, it was the entire market that just took a big hit. We don't really know why, we don't really know what triggered it, but these things, they do tend to rattle the cage. But because Polestar is about to merge officially, on the 22nd of June, if the vote is agreed by all the shareholders of GGPI stocks, then we'll have a proper merger. Well, because of this, a lot of people are skeptical. A lot of people thought Polestar stock, the GGPI share would be at least $20, $30, maybe even $40 by now. But I constantly have to remind people that uh, that's not how the real world works. You have to be a little bit more realistic. But nevertheless, Polestar recovered, and granted, it recovered better than it was doing previously. Because before the crash, it was just under $10. After the crash, it's above $10. Granted, a lot of people bought their share, especially when it was $8.67 per share. A lot of people bought, and of course they did because that's how the market worked. But if you think about it, goes Google and market cap, 1 billion, almost 1 billion flat. It went up 13%, which mean that it gained over 100 million in value, maybe above 130 million in value. That's how much the stock gained through its recovery. So that's not too bad if you ask me, that's not too bad, but it's the same for every company, especially the big ones that are experiencing a bad time in the economy right now. But a lot of people are celebrating. They're super happy to see that Polestar has made a huge recovery. And it's good. Now, Goes Guk and I will hold a special meeting of shareholders to vote the business combination agreement on June 22nd at 9.30 EST time, followed by a meeting of public warrant holders at 10 a.m. to approve an amendment to the existing warrant agreement. The merger process will be concluded in the first half of the year as previously announced. Now on Wednesday, Polestar announced that they had over 32,000 global orders for Polestar 2s. Now Polestar do have a third vehicle entering into the market start of next year, and it will be debuting on VLAN October this year. And that would be the Polestar 3. Now they haven't begun taking orders for this vehicle yet. They will probably start that sometime at the end of this year after the reveal, the full reveal of the vehicle, because we have had some images released as of late and they were fantastic. This car looked absolutely beautiful. But we must, of course, keep in mind, we must, of course, be realistic. No pre-orders have started for the Post R3. However, it's incredible to see that 32,000 orders were only for the Post R2. That's impressive on its own alone. And that's representing an increase of 290% versus the same period in 2021. And Postar has been expanding quite rapidly. They've expanded to 25 different markets this year. And by 2023, to 30 different markets. That would be incredible to see. Now the company's board of directors unanimously 
recommends that its stockholders and warrant holders vote for the adoption of business combination agreement and the approval of the proposed business combination and for the approval of the warrant amendment, Polestar stated. Now, the deal with Gozguchenheim will provide Polestar cash proceeds for over $1 billion, including $800 million from the special purpose acquisition company, the SPAC, and $250 million additionally from the institutional investors through a private investment in a public equity that's known as PIPE, P-I-P-E. So that's incredible for one. For one, I must remind everyone that because it's a public company merger, they kind of need the, the, the stockholders of the public company, which is Goose Guggenheim, to agree to merge with the new company, Polestar. Without that agreement, then they can't merge. Then things get complicated. But there are certainly some new rules that have been circulating about SPAC mergers. Essentially, the American government, they want them to be quite similar to the traditional public listing, which defeats the purpose of a SPAC. But nevertheless, it's just interesting to see how it works when a SPAC merger is being completed that they do need the permission of the stockholders, despite the fact that it's a public company. This is especially since it's a public company. That means it's run by people who've invested, people in the public who've invested. A private company, it would have been completely different. Needed no one permission except for the big investors, the top investors, the board members specifically. What's also interesting is that, like I said, Polestar will be getting one billion through this SPAC merger, including an additional eight hundred million from the special acquisition company Goes Guggenheim, and they will also get two hundred and fifty from institutional investors through a private investment in a public equity. That's a good amount of money coming to Polestar. Well, just a little bit above two billion that are coming into the Polestar pocket. That is phenomenal. It's good to see. Got me super excited. And this is precisely what we needed, precisely what we needed. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more and I'll see you in the next video.